programs? Yo, where the Denver Broncos will be meeting the New York Giants. It is a big question whether the Giants, with their outstanding defense, can handle the trickery of John Elway. Lawrence Taylor lo persigue y lo tiene afuera. Had, had to buy these from a lady in the stands. <laughs> You worked a long time for this, all right? You got an opportunity to be world champs right now. You can be what you want to be, all right? 60 minutes away from world championship, man. All we got for 60 minutes, all right? We'll be world champions, all right? Let's go. Super Bowl XXI began in the brilliant Southern California sunshine of Pasadena's Rose Bowl. The underdog Denver Broncos faced pro football's dominant team, the New York Giants, and the constant pressure exerted by their finest player, linebacker Lawrence Taylor. Denver set out to use Taylor's aggressiveness against him by guiding his momentum around the pass pocket to give quarterback John Elway running room underneath the rush. Well, Elway's skill with a scramble gave the Broncos an added dimension in their uphill battle against the NFL's best defense. It was number seven's powerful right arm that posed the greatest upset threat. Elway had come of age during the playoffs and now New York faced pro football's most potent new weapon. Combining mobility with long-range accuracy. He eludes the rush. Let's it go long. Out there is Vance Johnson. He catches the ball at the Giant 32. Elway led the Broncos to 10 first-quarter points against a team that had given up only three during the entire playoffs. Rich Carlos tied a Super Bowl record with a 48-yard field goal. And Elway pulled off a perfectly executed quarterback draw. Elway in charge, the team that some had said had no chance, now seemed capable of pulling off the biggest upsets in Super Bowl III and a man named Joe Namath. Meanwhile, giant quarterback Phil Simms seemed destined for a less dramatic role. Six, 82 digs, EQ on one. <laughs> for most of the year, Simms' job was to keep the ball control New York running game on track. But in the most important game of his life, a bolder Phil Simms stepped forward. On nine first down plays in the first half, Simms threw for nine completions. This surprising strategy kept the Denver defense off balance and allowed Phil Simms a moment in the sun to match John Elway pass for strong arm pass. Leading giant rusher Joe Morris also found himself in a new role, running pass routes and play fakes instead of inside traps and quick pitches.
New York's new offense also led to first quarter points. All right, Zeke, white flag, see under. Tight end Zeke Moat was sent in motion, and with Denver's seven-man line expecting a run on first down, Sims once again crossed them up with a play fake and a pass. Their first and goal of the sixth, trailing 3 nothing. Sims drops, he looks, he fires, it's a first down. The front. I had to wait for he come back. Thus far on both sidelines, offense was calling all the shots. He was going to protect against the run. Three man front with a mug over the right guard and another backer outside of the left tackle. <laughs> Traditionally, Super Bowls have been decided with defense, but the first 15 minutes of the game's 21st edition saw defenders pushed around and pummeled, struggling to keep up with the end zone to end zone track meet that was developing. Another reversal of Super Bowl form, neither team relied on running the ball. The sweat and sinew of this contest was pass protection and pursuit, opening the way for a classic quarterback duel. John Elway and Phil Sims combined for 13 completions and 13 attempts. Moving their teams up and down the field at will and setting a Super Bowl record for first quarter points. There's Allen go. He runs it on the throw and John Elway goes in. Oh. Sam trying to throw does. Touchdown! So far, this has the makeup of one of the all-time Super Bowls. And then after the first quarter of the play, the score is the Denver Broncos 10, the New York Giants 7. Hey, what? Next time we'll rip that. I want to rip it, Jim, because I can well, come it. around me, though. Come around you? I'm first. The second quarter began with the shell-shocked giant defense still unable to stop John Elway. Once again, Elway led his team the length of the field and into the land of the Giants. His eighth consecutive completion put the ball on New York's one-yard line and set the stage for Super Bowl XXI's pivotal moment. Ooh, how will we move it? How will they stop us? Play pass on him, John. As Denver on the throwing of John Elway is taking apart the best defense in football. Upset was in the air, and Denver head coach Dan Reeves decided to put the Giants away by running right at their strength for a touchdown that was only 36 inches away. On first down, Elway ran a sprint out to the left and was stopped for no gain by Lawrence Taylor. Elway had shown a pass option to slow giant pursuit. But Taylor stayed with them all the way and after being neutralized thus far in the game, LT made his first big play with a touchdown saving tackle. On second down, inside backer Harry Carson shut down a Sammy Winder trap up the middle for a two-yard loss. On third down, Denver tried a sweep left away from Taylor and Carson, only to find their unsung equal, number 58, Carl Banks. That one they have first and goal at the one, and they end up fourth and goal from the six. Exactly. On fourth down, Rich Carlos, who had earlier tied a record for the longest field goal in Super Bowl history, set another for the shortest field goal miss. Goes wide left. Fires the, the Giants. 
Suddenly, the sleeping giant was fully awake. Later in the second quarter, the Giants flushed Elway out of the pocket, and this time they didn't let him escape. George Mark tackles Elway into the end zone for a safety. Elway had finally run out of room in his own end zone as George Martin's sack for his safety shrunk the Bronco lead to 10-9. After dominating much of the first half, Denver was now a mile low. Missed opportunities had replaced confidence with doubt. But when Elway once again took his team inside the 20 with time running out of the half, the outcome of three touchdown tries and another short Carlos field goal could almost have been predicted. Bertie will get at least three. He'll be at cold, the kick is on the way, and it looks to be good. No, it is not good. No good. Yeah. There go. Denver left the field with a 10-9 lead and the awful premonition that the roof was about to fall in. Okay, man, I know everybody wants it. We've had some things in the first half went against us. We can't do anything about it. What we got to do is win the second half, and the only way to do that is play one play at a time. First Let's go as hard as we can, man, every play. Let's go. Let's go, yes! As twilight descended, Denver prepared to protect its lead in Super Bowl XXI. The Broncos stood their ground on New York's first three plays from the scrimmage. But then the Giants rolled the dice and changed the course of the entire game. This is Landetta's fourth punt of the football game. Trick play, trick play. Rutledge is in the game, the backup quarterback, and Denver doesn't have defensive backs on the field. The Giants on fourth and inches as Rutledge looks things over. Come on, baby, let's hold him, baby. Make a big one, let's go. Giants with the first trick play of the game on fourth down and inches in their 46-yard line. Rutledge keeps the ball and dives ahead, and I don't know if he got there. Oh, it all depends on the spot. It's close, Don. Damn. Bill Parcells on the sideline goes to the bag of tricks first in this game, and the Giants keep the drive alive. New York's fourth down gamble was the spark that ignited one of the most explosive quarters in Super Bowl history. Every pass Phil Sims threw was caught. A consecutive string that would reach a record-setting 10 in a row. Sims has the ball. Sims throws. End zone. The ball. Touchdown. And imagine what the halftime talk was. He said, we're going to go down, we're going to get the lead, and we're not going to look back. The Broncos tried to marshal their own support to stem New York's cresting tide of momentum. Through two quarters, the Giants had tested Denver's facade with probing taps. But now those probing taps were about to become sledgehammer blows. In the first half, Joe Morris had served as both pass receiver and decoy. Now Morris returned to his familiar runner's role, and the Broncos could do nothing to stop him. Number 44, Maurice Carthon, a guard in fullback's clothing, threw a series of shattering blocks to spring Morris free. With Carthon's crunching escort, overpowering line blocking, and Joe's knifing runs, the Giants control not just the line of scrimmage, but the tempo of the game as well. The result? Another New York score and a 1910 Giant lead. Giants are now beginning to take some control of the football game, Don. And now the Broncos, a troubled team as the third quarter wears out and night it begins to fall in Southern California. With darkness came more giant deception as Phil Simms orchestrated the second and most damaging trick play of the game. Simms 
Second and six, pitch back, Morris back to Sims, flea flicker, man is open, Bobby Johnson way downfield, now they go to the cocky, and he's inside the 10, inside the 5, a full gainer, down to the two-yard line, and the Giants are ready to put the knockout punch on. And we expected Denver to go with some of the trick plays, and so far, the Giants in the second half have been the trick plays. Morris takes it on the fake sweep, back to Sims, McConkey catches it. What a season for this kid. Was with the Giants. Released, picked up by the Green Bay Packers. He was going nowhere there. Now, almost a touchdown catch in Super Bowl 21. First and goal from the one-yard line. Power set. Joe Morris near side to the right. He's going in. Standing up in this one's history. Unless John Elway does something unbelievable as his team trails at the moment by more than two touchdowns. The Giants' run of 17 unanswered points was due as much to their stifling defense, led by linebacker Carl Banks. In the third period, the defense allowed virtually no yardage to not even a single first down. The Broncos once flew at offense, all but evaporated under the searing charge of the Giants. And Elway's previously accurate passes now sailed wide of their targets. Denver's absence of a running game was illustrated by the fact that Elway himself was the Broncos' leading rusher with just 27 yards. At one point, Denver passed 22 consecutive times, but few of these attempts could be considered successful. Denver never could find a way to contain Banks, who made 10 unassisted tackles, four for negative yardage. And now it is all gone against the Broncos. Their brilliant first half with the Giants dominating in this third quarter. The Broncos have won Seven plays, seven plays for two yards in the third quarter. By the fourth period, Denver was too far behind to entertain any hopes of victory. But one final offensive effort would, if nothing else, restore some lost pride that had been buried by the Giants' avalanche. The experts had said it would take a career performance from John Elway to upset the Giants. With both possibilities gone, it was now Elway alone responsible for virtually all of Denver's yardage. As good as Elway was, one great player rarely beats a great team all by himself. And Super Bowl XXI was no exception. The Bronco quarterback actually passed for more yards than Phil Simms, but Simms produced numbers of his own that made NFL history. He connected on 22 of 25 passes for three touchdowns, no interceptions, and a completion average of 88%, the highest for any postseason game in league history. In the grandest of Tinseltown traditions, a star was born in the Super Bowl. Sims' career had its share of setbacks, but now after eight years of injuries, benchings, and booings, Phil Sims became an overnight sensation on pro football's biggest stage. Super Bowl championship, their first NFL title since 1956. Sims, unbelievable. If you vote for the MVP right now, he's the guy. After this day's performance, put him in a class of elite quarterback in the NFL. Well, the outcome of the game long since decided. The only drama still remaining was when the Giants' traditional Gatorade dunking of head coach Bill Parcells would finally happen. Here comes Harry Carson now. He's looking for the Gatorade. Everybody is staying in his stadium. He's got it. Parcells is up there without the headset, and they get it. 
the New York Giants won a world championship by excelling in every phase of the game. And now they found just as many different ways to celebrate their accomplishment. victory dance to Bill Parcells' victory ride. The final moments of Super Bowl XXI saluted a long-awaited moment. After more than a quarter century of trying, the Giants had won the championship of a lifetime. New York's fans had witnessed the culmination of a glittering season, a victory that had transformed the Rose Bowl into the land of the Giants.